I want to talk to you about the body's antioxidant system and some, some yeah. kind of corollaries of that. Uh, in particular, I, th I think this is one of the most underrated topics and least talked about topics, but is one of the most important topics in health. Yeah. Uh, and so there's also some myths to be debunked here, but kind of give people an overview of what the body's antioxidant system is all about and why it matters. Yeah, I think from a big picture level, the best way to think about oxidative stress is as the wear and tear that happens on your system. And the wear and tear that happens naturally as you age, but then it accelerates under certain conditions. So if you are aging, um, and of course, age really is just the accumulation of insults over time. I mean, there's there underneath what we call aging, there's got to be a natural process of evolution. But layered onto that is just the accumulation of so many insults from our environment, from diseases that are happening within us and so on. And so um, normal metabolism generates oxidants that cause oxidative stress, which is that wear and tear on our tissues. And that's why no matter how healthy you are, as you get older, you'll be a you'll have accumulated more and more exposure to those natural oxidants just generated as a natural byproduct of metabolism. But if you have a metabolic disorder, like if you have diabetes, for example, then because there are inefficiencies in your metabolism and things going wrong in your metabolism, you're generating far more of those oxidants. So metabolic problems is one thing. Exposure to toxins whether that's environmental toxins from gasoline or plastic or, or you know, whatever industrial activity, or it's exposure to ethanol from all the drinks you're having, or it's exposure to cigarette smoke from the, what you're smoking or what someone else is smoking in an enclosed room with you. Exposure to any of those things can accelerate um, oxidative stress. Now, if you wanna get a little bit more technical, one thing that we have appreciated mostly over the last 10-ish years. I mean, really, it goes back a little further than that, but we're really, um, more and more, it's really um, accelerating the degree to which we're, we're starting to appreciate this in the scientific community, is that these oxidants are not just causing damage. They're actually, they are actually normal products of metabolism to have regulatory roles. <clears throat> and so if you go back to why does normal metabolism generate these oxidants? Well, one of the things that happens is because a certain percentage of the fuel you burn in your mitochondria are generating these oxidants, they will have feedback loops where if you start generating too many oxidants, then they'll regulate pathways that stop energy from coming into the mitochondria because um, as a feedback loop to prevent damage because they're exposing an inefficiency in your ability to burn that energy and they're shutting down the energy burning to prevent further damage. Uh, so there are things like that. But that means that if you have something wrong with your metabolism that is generating um, too many oxidants, then you, maybe it's just that adaptation that causes problems, right? Because you may not be causing a lot of damage to your body. You may not see the wrinkles developing in your skin from damaged collagen, but you might feel like crap because your mitochondria are always in self-protection mode by using these oxidants to turn themselves off, essentially. Yeah. And so, so people who are more sophisticated in talking about oxidative stress and damage will separate this, the discussion into oxidative stress, which is either dysregulation of the pathways or regulation of pathways that is proper but bad, right? Yeah. So, so like, as it, let's take that example that I just gave. Uh, the mitochondria shut down their um, shut down their burning of energy when it's not safe for them to burn energy. Well, on the one hand, maybe the oxidants are generated by the mitochondria and they're part of that feedback loop. On the other hand, maybe you have next to that some inflammation going on, and you have this immune cell that is trying to kill pathogens by making lots of oxidants. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of those oxidants is to kill the pathogens, but because they're right next door then the oxidants start leaking over. And if there's a lot of them, maybe they leak into the cell and maybe they shut down the mitochondria mm -hmm. because of the signaling pathway that the mitochondria is supposed to use. So it's sort of like, it's, it's not even a hijacking because it, there's no deliberate process here. It's just an accidental, uh, it's just an accidental thing um, where the, the right normal regulatory role is misfire. Yeah. Um, do, you mind so, I, do you mind if I interject a couple things here? 
Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. So first of all, I just want to point out to everybody listening, mitochondria obviously are our body cellular energy generator. So the links here oh, yeah. <laughs> and energy levels should be very clear that, you know, if, if you have this kind of oxidative stress going on, that's leading to mitochondrial shutdown, you know, one of the key symptoms on a subjective level, as far as what a person would feel of this happening is of course, fatigue. Yeah. Um, now I, I want to, sort of present a frame to you that I think will be helpful for a lot of people to understand some of these things because probably some of what you just said is, is over a lot of people's heads. Okay. So uh, let, the, the typical way of thinking about free radicals and antioxidants is free radicals are bad, free radicals damage our cells, and we need more antioxidants to neutralize the free radicals. And most people think about this like you know, free radicals are just sort of bad period. So the more antioxidants we can dump into our system to neutralize them and keep them as low as possible, the better off we'll be. So why is that thinking wrong? So that thinking is outdated. Uh, around 1985, there was a landmark paper where scientists came out and said, simple definition of oxidative stress is an imbalance between too many oxidants and not enough antioxidants. And in that framework, you say, oh, I want less oxidant, fewer oxidants, and I want more antioxidants. Um, that has become very outdated because we've realized that these oxidants are playing a normal role in cell metabolism to, re to regulate the pathways. So back then, you would think of, of oxidative stress you wouldn't separate oxidative stress and oxidative damage because it's all just one thing having too many oxidants doing things are not supposed to and cause them damage. What we are realizing now is that your mitochondria are your the powerhouse of the cell is supposed to generate a little tiny bit of these oxidants during metabolism because it helps gauge how much energy should be coming in. Um, but like we were just talking about that, uh, that, normal regulatory role can cause problems, right? In the ideal situation, you have those oxidants and they're just, you know, if, if you have a trillion cells in your body and one cell is overburdened and generates more oxidants and says, I'm not taking up any glucose from the bloodstream, for example, um, no problem. Your, your uh, blood glucose isn't even gonna go up even though the glucose didn't go into that cell. Why? Because there's a trillion other cells that are perfectly happy to take up that glucose and you just share the burden. And so it's just a, you know, in a healthy person, this is, this regulation is happening and it's doing something positive by helping mitochondria only take on the burdens that they can handle to be efficient burners of energy, to produce your, the cellular energy that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And um, this, you know, the cells that can take on a better, uh, more of a burden do the cells that can't don't. Uh, so that's a good thing, positive thing. Another positive role would be um, to help you adapt to changes. So one of the things that helps that happens when you exercise is you generate more of these oxidants, and then your body adapts by saying, "Okay, that means I need to make more mitochondria to burn more energy, and I need to make more of my own antioxidant protection to burn that energy cleanly." And then you go home. From the exercise, you rest, you refeed, all those processes happen. The result is you get more fit. So one of the, one of the, inter uh, one of the things that people are interested in is this question of, can you actually do too much? Can you actually prevent getting fit in response to exercise by trying to suppress the generation of oxidants when we know that generating oxidants is part of what produces the fitness response to exercise. Right, and just to be clear, like it used to be thought maybe 10 plus years ago, uh, or maybe even for a lot of people more recently than that, uh, it, was, it was recommended for a long time or it was thought for a long time that like exercise is good. We know that exercise is associated with disease prevention, benefits of various kinds. We, we know it's very clearly healthy for us. But the problem with exercise is that it creates this burst of free radicals and so what if we can do the exercise and get the benefits, but take antioxidant supplements before, after, or before yeah. and after the exercise, yeah. to get the benefits without the harms of exercise. Now, why, 
you know, obviously there was several studies that tested this. Why did that turn out to be misguided? It turned out to be misguided because those oxidants are what caused the fitness response. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the simple, the simple answer. And it's not, I mean, we, there's a whole nother, um, whole nother topic that's very analogous, which is inflammation. Uh, you know, we, we, we are very down on inflammation and people think the same thing like, oh, I will, I'll exercise and then I'll load up on NSAIDs, the, the common anti-inflammatory drugs that you can buy at the drugstore to prevent the soreness and other, the other issues that happen. And uh, that also prevents the adaptation to exercise. Mm -hmm. So um, these oxins are part of a normal signaling process that help your body communicate what's going on and what to do. And so if exercise generates more of them, it's because exercise wants, I mean, you know, wants you <laughs> to be more fit and those oxidants are the signal that communicates that, that helps you go from exercise to fitness. Hey there, this is Ari again. One more quick thing before you go. Just make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Energy Blueprint, and also make sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform, whether that's iTunes or Stitcher or anything else. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview, and I will see you again next week.